Hello and welcome to another episode of the DMG Tech Show. I am your host, Jonathan Parkinson, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about Drive Droid. You're going to be brought to a screen that looks similar to this. Now, how this whole thing works is um, you'll just come down here and press the plus button. So, what is Drive Droid? Let me go ahead and go over that overview real fast. Drive Droid is kind of mimicking and simplifying things so you don't need to use a what we call a live USB. Uh, what a live USB is, uh, a lot of you are going to know this purely for Linux users. Uh, this is available for Mac as well as um, Windows machines, though it might be a little bit different, a little more a little more steps to configure it. Uh, but what this is, is it's going to be, so you don't have to make a, a recovery disk. You can simply just die, you know, die right in, get the iOS you're, or ISO you're looking for. So for this example, I'll go to download image. Now you can just drag, a drag and drop or copy on an ISO file to your actual hard drive of your phone or to an external memory and you can use it that way. Uh, but if you do not have one, you can go directly into this list and as you see, it has a pretty heavy and long list to choose from. Uh, so for example, I'm an elementary OS user myself. You'll just click elementary OS and you're gonna see that we have two versions. The AM, uh, AMD 64 is gonna be for 64-bit processors the i386 is going to be for 32-bit processors. So do take that into consideration. Uh, I also do want to make a note that these two versions of elementary OS are going to be based off of Luna. Now, if you're looking for the cutting edge, cutting, you know, bleeding edge of what Linux distribution you're currently trying to install, chances are you're probably going to have to go directly to their website or something of this type, and you're going to have to download it directly on there. Uh, I believe this app only tries to carry stable versions of an ISO and I actually recommend that for that developer of this app or the developers of this app. Uh, it just will save a headache later on down the road when users are complaining it doesn't work, it doesn't work, when it's really not the app that's not working, it's the ISO that's having you know problems, your keyboard doesn't work, your touchpad, something. So that's pretty much going to be how you can do that. Now obviously Ubuntu is going to be the big one. So when we go into Ubuntu, you're going to see there's a longer list to choose from. Now just make sure that you are downloading the correct one. Uh, if you download the 14.04 server, that's not going to be your desktop environment. So, you know, if it says the word server, as it says right there, take that into note. Uh, that's going to be for people that are more uh, tech, tech users, I guess, a heavier tech user, people that like to be an administrator and run server type stuff, that's going to be for you. Uh, for anybody else that's just looking for the desktop, it's going to be either these two right here. Now you're going to see there's two versions right below it, and that's 14.04.1. So that's obviously going to be a new version, new, newer version than the 14.04. So remember that, take that into consideration. Uh, I recommend coming in here and downloading, you know, that model for the 64 bits, and then this model right here for the 32-bit computers. Uh, for anybody using a Chromebook, specifically like the Acer C720 or the HP Chromebooks, as I do other videos on that, uh, you're going to do the AM64, you're going to do the AMD64 on everything. So just remember you will always be 64-bit. Now we're going to back out of here. Now as you see, I already have a elementary OS stable AMD64 from 2013. So that is going to be the Luna. Now I have gone back and forth between Frey and Luna. This is going to be kind of a side ramble for elementary OS users. Uh, I'm going to recommend staying with the Luna as of this point of this video. And the reason is, is you get, I'm a big tweaker. I like to have, not tweaker or anything, drugs. It sounds extremely horrible. But I'm a tech tweaker as far as uh, when it comes to, you know, doing things on my device. I like to be able to do pretty much everything. Uh, so I like to use the Super Wing panel as well as the elementary OS tweaks. Now you can get them installed on Freya, but they're not fully done yet. And there's some pieces missing, uh, specifically adding your own shortcuts to the keyboard, getting the Super Wing panel installed smoothly. That has, you know, that has a little bit of a glitch to it, but that's kind of just a side ramble. Let me go back in there. So now, once you have that installed, or once you have your image added, so you go in there, you can either create a blank image, or if you want an added image from file, click add an image from file. 
title it whatever you want, go into search, and then just go hunt it down wherever it's at. And then you'll just go ahead and add it to your get the check mark at the top. You get, should get something similar to the very top one, except it should be named whatever you named it. Now you just want to go ahead and tap it, and you'll be greeted with this list. Now what you want is to tap this button right here. Now what that's going to do is it's going to turn your Android into a USB stick. So then you'll just take your data cable, plug it into the bottom of your Android device, plug it into the computer of your choice, and go ahead and restart your computer. Now remember, you're going to have to press a certain key button when your computer first starts up to be able to boot into that. Uh, certain devices, it's going to be F10. Other devices, it's going to be pressing the escape key. Uh, you're just going to have to know exactly how your device boots into that command prompt. And that's pretty much it. Uh, coming into the settings, you're going to see there's a few little things that you can change over here uh, if you want to. You don't really need to mess with any of this stuff. It'll just work right out of the box. Just simply add your am uh, image, tap it, pick and choose what you want. So as you see, I'll pick this. I'll get a little reading. I've been granted. Now I'm going to pull down my top bar if I can. I think I'll extend it. And you're going to see there's hosted image. And that's all you need to do. Now I can either come back here, tap it, and it should unhost me. Or I can come in here, tap it again. There we go. And as you see, it says rever uh, restoring USB state. And that's all you need to do. Uh, if you don't see your thing on here, go ahead and hit the, re you know, the refresh button. It should be able to do that. Uh, remember, you do need to be rooted for this. So I kind of expect anybody that's a Linux user to be rooted anyway. That's kind of what we do. Um, if you're somebody that's going the Chrome OS out of things and installing Crouton or trying to install Linux distro, direct, distro directly onto your Chromebook, uh, the way some of my other videos have, as I've replaced Chrome OS completely with elementary OS on my Acer C720, uh, you're going to need to make sure you're rooted. So I understand that not every device, not every user is going to be rooted as they're just trying to get probably Steam or some sort of program running on their Chromebook. Maybe their mom or dad bought their Chromebook for them and they want to be able to do a little bit more than what Chrome OS allows. I understand where you guys are coming from. So I do recommend getting into the routing. Understand that. Go to xda.com and you should learn a lot more about your specific device. Um, but that's, again, a whole other side ramble. Uh, if you do have any questions or comments about how DriveDroid works or if you're you know, having a little problem getting it working, uh, just leave your comments in the section below, and I will try to get back to them as soon as possible. Uh, just remember that if you are going to be doing boot up some stuff to back up your data, all of your data. So that's either going to be putting it in the cloud or put it onto an external hard drive that you're not going to touch. Because if you're going to get, you, you know, you might run into a problem where you might not have your computer working for, let's say, 24 hours, 48 hours, worst case scenario. Uh, you know, don't freak out. Use your other mobile devices. You know, you have an option to get online, communicate with people, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. If I don't have the answers for you, I will always try to point you in the right direction, at least get you involved in a community that's going to be a little more helpful than what I could possibly be. Um, again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, see you guys next time.